eight trillion dollars. That's the predicted cost of cybercrime in 2023. It is an incomprehensibly large cost to society. To put it a further context, the annual cost of cybercrime is larger than the GDP of Canada, Russia, Brazil, and UK put together. The amount and scale of cyber attacks and data breaches in recent years is staggering. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the most common cybersecurity attacks of 2023, break down how they work, and understand how to protect yourself against these attacks in 2024. The five most common cyber attacks are phishing, ransomware, DDoS, SQL injection, and malware. Let's start with phishing. Phishing is one of the most common types of cybersecurity attacks in the world. Phishing involves a hacker typically masquerading as a trustworthy entity trying to trick you into volunteering your sensitive information, such as login credentials and credit card numbers. Phishing scams trick victims by using social engineering to create the sense of urgency. And because several people in your organization may receive it at the same time, it's even more dangerous. And if even one person clicks on a malicious link inside that communication, that's when the house of cards really starts to topple. Hackers will be quick to ask you to submit personal details or a fake website they might have made up or send money to accounts that you trust but actually belong to them. To see this in the real world, let me introduce you to Elvidus Nimiskauskas, an unassuming 50-year-old Lithuanian man. He may not seem like much, but over just a two-year span and with just one simple phishing trick, Elvidus stored more than $120 million from Facebook and Google. So, how do you do it? Well, Elvidus impersonated a legitimate hardware supplier from Asia, which Facebook and Google did routine business with, and sent phishing mails to the employees of these tech companies. In these mails, he would raise fraudulent invoices, posing as the hardware company, asking employees of Facebook and Google to transfer money into bank accounts that he created that had the same name as the original hardware supplier. And he got away with this for nearly two years, from 2013 to 2015. There's a variety of phishing attacks, some with fun pun-related names like spear phishing and whale phishing. Other examples include clone phishing, phishing, link manipulation, filter evasion, and website forging. So how do you protect yourself against a phishing attack in 2024? Experts recommend some best practices. To avoid phishing, always start with staff training. Human error was the cause of 90% of data breaches in 2019. So always train your staff to verify sender details, never click on suspicious links, and be wary of emails that request sensitive information in an urgent manner. Number two, ransomware. Ransomware, very simply put, is a type of malicious software designed to deny you access to your own computer or data until a ransom is paid. And the 2020s have been rife with it. To understand what ransomware looks like, Imagine your five-year-old takes your phone and refuses to give it back to you until you give them a treat. Now imagine this happening 500 million times a year. And instead of toddlers, it's hackers. And instead of treats, it's billions of dollars. Ransomware can paralyze entire infrastructures, cause major downtime, data leaks, intellectual property theft, and so much more. The most popular real-world example of ransomware is WannaCry. Released in 2017, WannaCry targeted computers running Windows operating systems. It then locked users out of their systems and would ask for a payment, often hundreds of dollars, in order to give users back their access. There's four broad types of ransomware. Scareware, screen lockers, encryption ransomware, and mobile ransomware. The best ways to tackle ransomware is to eliminate points of failure. So, regularly back up your data, always keep your software updated, and use reputable antivirus software to prevent unauthorized applications from executing in the first place. If you're attacked, experts also recommend not paying as that only increases the incentive for further attacks like that to take place. Number three, DDoS attacks. One of the more popular tropes in movies, DDoS is an abbreviation for distributed denial of service. In a DDoS attack, multiple compromised computer systems attack a single target such as a server or a website overloading it and causing a denial of services for other users. A DDoS attack can disrupt any service connected to the internet, such as networks, databases, mobile devices, and even specific application functions. As a result, a DDoS attack can lead to significant operational, financial, and reputational damages. Unlike phishing and malware, there's no one simple way to prevent a DDoS attack. Not only are companies constantly under attack, the scale and frequency of these attacks have gotten exponentially larger over the years too. In 2022, Google blocked what it called the largest DDoS attack ever executed. 
<laughs> the very next year, another DDoS attack took place against Google, except this one was seven and a half times larger in volume than the previous. There's three broad kinds of DDoS attacks, volume-based, protocol and network layer based and application layer based attacks. To protect against DDoS attacks, experts recommend companies employ DDoS protection services and manage network infrastructure so that it can handle unexpected traffic spikes. Number four, SQL injection. To understand SQL injection, it helps to understand what SQL is. SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's a popular programming language used to manage online databases. It is incredibly powerful and popular as a tool. What makes it dangerous? Well, businesses often use SQL and databases to store sensitive information like usernames, password, credit card information, and other important data. In poorly designed websites with inadequate input validation, a web page or app will have a user input directly into an SQL query. This is a problem because hackers can feed custom inputs to the database in question and gain access or manipulate the databases. As recently as 2015, TalkTalk, a UK-based phone and broadband provider, suffered a major SQL injection attack, leading to the theft of personal data of around 150,000 customers. The direct and indirect cost of the attack to the company totaled nearly $100 million. There's three types of SQL injections based on the methods that attackers use to access backend data. In-band SQL injection, blind SQL injection, and out-of-band SQL injection. There's several ways to prevent SQL injection, including using secure coding practices, parameterized queries, and object relational mapping. Number five, malware. Malware is one of the most well-known types of cybersecurity attacks and is at its core any program or file that is harmful to a computer. You probably already know some of these types of malwares. Computer viruses, worms, Trojan horses, spyware, adware, and more. Stuxnet is probably one of the most famous industrial scale examples of malware in history. A highly sophisticated computer worm that targeted Iran's nuclear program, it caused substantial damage to Iran's nuclear centrifuges significantly setting back the country's nuclear program. Different kinds of malware do different things, but at the end of the day, malware seeks to damage, disrupt, or gain unauthorized access to computer systems. In doing so, it can take partial or full control over a device's operations, leading to sensitive data leaks, spying, and blackware. Malware is frequently installed on computers by shady internet downloads or USB drives, which automatically install the program without the user's approval. Any malware is a cybersecurity risk. Whether the purpose of the malware is to steal sensitive information, expose keystrokes, or even just mine cryptocurrency. There's several ways to protect yourself against malware, including using reputable antivirus software, keeping systems updated, and being cautious of unsolicited downloads and educating users and employees about safe computing practices. One great way to have your cybersecurity basics covered is by undertaking a cybersecurity audit. This could be NIST 353, NIST CSF, SOC 2, ISO 27001, and much more. And if you're looking to get compliant with any kind of framework, look no further than compliance automation in Sprinto. Sprinto helps companies get compliant with over 15 plus frameworks by digitizing and automating the compliance process. This means that you can get compliant faster and more effectively and stay compliant too, year round instead of during an audit cycle, improving your cybersecurity. Companies just like yours that get compliant with Sprinto save up to 80% of their time, effort, and cost during the compliance process. To know more, visit Sprinto.com or book a demo directly with our cybersecurity and compliance experts using the link in the description below. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.